Today we're making gluten-free, dairy-free chicken nuggets based on a recipe that we've been loving at home from the new Nick DiGiovanni cookbook. My kids are in love with these dino nuggets. So let's jump right in. First we're gonna prep our bread that's gonna be soaked in milk and it's going to be mixed in with our ground chicken. So I have almond milk here, organic almond milk, which is what we're gonna use. Next, we're gonna season the bread mixture and we're gonna add a healthy dose of garlic and onion and salt. Now this is going to be seasoning two pounds of ground chicken, so be generous. Generous pinch of black pepper. Touch raw meat and put some gloves on. So we're about to add the meat and the egg. Give the eggs a quick whisk, just to spread them up. already pre-ground. We really like this recipe. My kids really like this recipe with the ground meat because it has more of a kind of McDonald's nugget texture as opposed to a chicken tender that still has the texture of chicken breast. Now when we do this at home, the recipe calls to spread it on a baking sheet and you freeze it so that you can use cookie cutters and cut out shapes. Now we have not ever wanted to wait long enough, <laughs> thought ahead long enough to freeze them and get successful shapes. I think you need to think ahead and let them freeze for over an hour, which we never do. So the shapes have never really worked for us. We end up just grabbing clumps of it with our hands and breading it and frying it. So we're just gonna bring tray and we're gonna portion these off into little balls and then we're gonna start breading. And if you do give it a shot trying to freeze this mixture and doing cookie cutters before you bread, let us know how it works out, how long you had to freeze it for. One of these days we will think ahead and let them freeze long enough. I think the kids just get so excited about eating them that they really don't want to wait. And we've started making it in multiple batches so that we have some left over. It's great to heat in the air fryer the next day for a few days. And it's really, if you do it in a bigger batch, it's not that much more work to do our two or three times batch of these chicken nuggets. And I'm just gonna finish portioning this out. Then we're going to try breading them with two different breadcrumbs. Since this is our first time trying to gluten-free this recipe, we're going to see our breadcrumbs that we made in the last video, just by drying out some of our fluffy bread, fluffy gluten-free bread, and sticking it in the food processor versus some store-bought brown rice based breadcrumbs and we'll see which one we like maybe we like both of them and then we're gonna try two different cooking techniques usually we deep fry these but you know what we're gonna also throw them in the oven and see how they bake okay so next we're gonna set up our dredging station crack a few eggs and for every egg you're gonna add a tablespoon of water it kind of thins out the egg I'm also gonna keep the carton of eggs nearby because sometimes, sometimes the recipe, I mean, you kind of just run out of egg. Sometimes you need a little more breadcrumbs. So just keep them near 
buying a new mini car. Okay, so we're gonna try these store bought breadcrumbs. They are made from organic brown rice. And I like to kind of fill these bowls as I go too, because you can always add more. But once you put your raw chicken or your raw egg in there, you can't really use them for another recipe. Okay, and lastly, you need some kind of gluten-free flour. We're just gonna use tapioca here. So we've got some tapioca starch in the bowl. So the order we do this in is flour, egg, Crumbs. And we're going to get another tray ready to put our breaded nuggets on. You could just use a plate. When we do it at home, we just use a plate. So we're going to go flour, and then egg. And I like to use a different hand to do the breadcrumbs. It keeps your one hand clean because your egg hand's going to get a little bit gross. There we go. breaded them. What we like to do at home, because my kids don't like super thick nuggets, is when you put them on the tray, you can squish them down so they're thin. I'm going to do a few more of these store-bought breadcrumbs, and then we're going to switch over. We will do about half, half with the store-bought rice ones, and then we're going to do half with our homemade breadcrumbs. And see which ones give us the crunch that we want. Maybe they both do. Sometimes, if you don't have gloves either, you know what you can do? You can do a Ziploc bag on your hands. That works well too, and then it's easy, easy to clean your hands after as well. Easy to clean up. Now, when you're setting the station up at home, I'll show you our home setup. We work from one side to another towards our stove and the fryer station. That way you go flour, egg, breadcrumbs to the plate that they sit on. And then that plate is gonna be super close to your fryer. So it's easy to put them in. And then on the other side of the oil, we will have your cooling station. So you want a wire rack on top of a baking tray. Which you're gonna put your hot chicken on. And what we do at home just to be safe is we use a internal temperature probe the chicken because you want to make sure the chicken's cooked all the way through and sometimes it's tricky if your fryer oil is going up and down and it's hard to maintain a temperature to know for sure that your chicken is cooked through or sometimes it's a little thicker there's more chicken meat in one nugget versus another and you really just don't want to take that chance so we check them every single one you want internal temperature of 165 celsius and then you know it's safe that it's cooked through it's nice to have a second person on hand too that has clean hands when you're doing a job like this. Yesterday we made the regular ones out of the cookbook at home and uh, my son was my, I guess I was the sous chef to him. He was the fryer and he was pulling them out and checking the temperatures. And I get to be the breader because he doesn't want to touch the raw meat or the egg. But then he has the clean hands to grab anything. So on the last one of these, we're gonna make 17 with the bread rice, brown rice breadcrumbs, and then we're gonna make 18 with our homemade breadcrumbs if we have enough, and if not, we will switch back. So I'm just gonna do a quick clean up, wash my hands. Not that I need to, but I'm gonna wash my hands and come back with the other breadcrumbs. Flip both trays around to the empty tray. We're working towards it's reachable. And then nuggets are close to our station. Get our flour back in there and our egg. And these are our homemade breadcrumbs. I actually think these are gonna have a lot more flavor and crunch. Go or your flour. 
flour, you need to put more flour. You seem to be doing well on egg. If you run low on egg, feel free to crack another egg with another tablespoon of water. If you don't eat eggs, I have done this before with flax eggs. I think I'm gonna need a bit more flour, guys. Helper today, so I'm gonna have to go wash my hands. I'm not gonna dip into the flour. Raw meat and raw egg. Go. It's measuring cup out in case. Not to measure it, but just as a scoop in case we need a bit more flour. Ten more of these to go. And we will set up our fryer station. One thing you'll notice is that the nuggets that you made at the start, compared to the ones you're doing now fresh, the ones you did at the start are going to sort of set up so the, the crumbs kind of and the egg set up, which is nice. It makes it easier to handle putting it into the fryer. So sometimes I will make them ahead and let them sit for a couple of minutes before we get the fryer going. Sometimes when we're short on time, they're too hungry. We will break from the breading station, dump them in the hot oil. But it is a lot easier to handle them when they've sat for a couple of minutes. So it looks like we are out of our homemade breadcrumbs. We don't have enough to do the last five. We only use four slices of bread, so next time we'll use more. I'm gonna mix both breadcrumbs and we're gonna do a hybrid just for the sake of time middle of the tray so we know which ones they are sometimes if you are close like this you can add a little bit of water instead of cracking a whole nother egg because you really don't need a whole nother egg when you've got just a couple nuggets left home stretch guys you can't see it but oh, there's one left this was with two pounds of ground chicken but you could totally just do half that So we've turned our oven on to 325. It's got a fan, so it's equivalent to your home oven at 350. I'm gonna get some fryer oil going. So if you're gonna fry, you wanna set up a pan with about an inch or more of oil, your choice of oil. When we're here, I use red palm fruit oil or green egg. Or coconut oil. When we're at home, we use peanut oil. And you want to let it get up to 350. We're not quite there yet, so we're going to go set up the ones that are going to go in the oven. All right, here's our breaded nuggets. We've got the first set that was done with the brown rice crumbs. We've got the set that was done with our homemade crumbs. And then we got a couple kind of stragglers when we ran out of breadcrumbs and I mixed the last bits of both of them. What we'll do is we'll do about half to a parchment tray. If you like, you could spray them with a cooking spray. I don't have one here and I might try to brush them with some melted oil, maybe. See if it'll get them crispier. Okay, these ones are gonna go in the oven. Burrow our pot of oil for a second. I'm gonna brush it real quick. Act like a cooking spray. We've got some kind of cooking spray. They have those new avocado sprays. If you don't like canola, you can do that too. Or if you have one of those olive oil pumps. Brush the other side too. This oil is pretty close to the right fryer temperature too. We'll get it back on the element and we'll check what it was on. I'm gonna check them in 15 minutes and we'll see what their internal temperature is at. Okay, so our oil's up to temperature. 
drop a few in. You don't want to overcrowd your oil because it will cause your oil to drop too far. And I think we can get away with four of them. While we were doing these at home, we were doing them for three minutes and 50 seconds. I'm just going to trace that up with the flying rack and some parchment underneath. Parchment's not necessary, but it definitely makes it for easier cleanup for the grease that drops off. You want to keep checking your oil temperature and adjusting your heat cover down. Look away for a little too long. Your oil temperature can drop too low or it can shoot really high. And it's gonna affect the way your chicken cooks. If it's too low, then it's a long time to reach that temperature. You might get really greasy nuggets. But if your temperature gets too hot, the outside's gonna get too brown before the inside comes in. Nope, you can't even hear that alarm. Let's pull it out and set. It'd be really good if you had a spider or a spotted spoon to pull them out. My spider got sucked away with the actual spider. Can we use on Pinchy Day? I don't have that, so I'm using this spoon. We're going to use our thermometer probe, turn it on, and we're going to see if they are in fact cooked enough. We just added our last five into the oil. Set the timer again for four minutes. Timer's going on our oven. Let's see. Let's see how they're doing. I'm gonna grab the thermometer. I'll probe the biggest guy. Alright, that guy's cooked enough. They seem to be crunchy. They're really hot inside. Awesome. Let's get the oven off and get them out. I am not videotaping. Man, okay, so I just pulled out the second set of nuggets and temperature checked them. They're over 74. I left them in a little long because that timer started going when I was pulling the other nuggets out of the oven. Now we're on to our homemade breadcrumb nuggets. Let's get our timer on check it in four minutes. Okay, the timer is going up. It's been four minutes. These look a lot darker than our first ones. But remember, these are different breadcrumbs. Let's do a quick internal temperature check before we get the next batch in and get them to go back. Four minutes seems to me more than enough to hit our 74 degrees. Okay, we're good. Our oil temperature jumped up a little bit on those last ones. In the meantime, these are our oven nuggets. We should have flipped them halfway through. It would have resulted in a crunchy or nugget. I've flipped them now since they came out. You can see the brown or underside, whereas the top's not as brown. But they look good too. That is our brown rice breadcrumbs, or homemade breadcrumbs, and then the leftover mix of the two. Clean up. All right, let's get this oil off the heat. And we'll 
some good cleaning up while we wait for them to cool enough to try them. At least 200 extra croissants. Like I'm croissants. So I've tasted a few. I haven't tried the oven ones yet. But these ones are really good. I didn't try the middle one because it's sort of mixed the two. I figured I'd try this one and our breadcrumbs. I like actually our breadcrumbs. It's crunchier. So let's try oven ones of our breadcrumbs. That's pretty good too. I don't mind them in the oven. And really, it's a ton less work, a lot less cleanup, and they're healthier for you too. So even though they don't look quite as golden brown and delicious, maybe that's actually the way to go. Sorry, they're so good. Okay, put that aside. Let's try oven baked brown rice crumbs. That one's good. It's a much softer texture, almost a batter texture. It's much softer, it's not as crunchy, but it is delicious too. I think overall, it's a success. And really, it means that you can pretty much go with whatever breadcrumbs, whether you store by them or you make your own. And we can oven bake them, which is awesome. So now I'm gonna bring these home and test them on my family and see what they think. And then we'll also try reheating them in our air fryer. See you in a bit. So that's it. Like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and let us know if you give this recipe a try.